the central pressure, the, the main energy part of this storm is just explosive. In fact, this will be probably the worst winter storm on record in this country. From Channel 6, your 24-hour news source, a special report, the storm will never forget. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for a look back at the blizzard of 93. I'm Scott Richards. And I'm Janet Hall. Tonight we'll introduce you to some of the victims and heroes of the storm. And we'll look at just how prepared our emergency agencies were. This time, two weeks ago, the snow was already piling up. And it piled up fast, too. In just a matter of hours, this is what we had. Beautiful. But when those southern pines snapped, they came down on power lines. Now, four days before the blizzard, Channel 6 meteorologist James Spann predicted snow would blanket the Birmingham area. James, I remember how amazed you were looking at your maps and computer models at what you were seeing. Scott, four days before the storm hit, our eyes popped out the minute we saw those first computer projections. It forecast a storm of hurricane intensity moving through South Alabama and South Georgia. That's a perfect position to create near blizzard conditions in Birmingham. All of the conditions we saw combined to form what meteorologists all agree is the storm of the century. Friday morning, March 12th, we see the first glimpse of what's about to come. The flurry sparks people to grocery stores to stock up on food, but even some folks there don't believe the predictions. Friday afternoon, the snow is back. At first, it seems so peaceful. Early that evening, the scenes look more like a Christmas card or a ski resort. <laughs> but we soon know this isn't just a winter storm, it's a blizzard. This storm quickly paralyzes 18 wheelers and makes our highways seem like Siberia, not the South. I spent two years in Alaska and a year in Maine. It's similar to it. Never, I've been here 40 years, never seen it like this. The storm forces hundreds of people driving south to head to local motels to seek any kind of shelter they can find. There's people laying on the couches, laying on the floors. Uh, they're not letting anybody in. They don't have any room. We begin to see the first signs of a problem that grows enormous by morning. Power outages and conditions that make it nearly impossible for crews to do repair work. As the night turns to day, the snow continues, and we begin to see the full magnitude of this storm. As night returns, another problem. Temperatures drop well below freezing, icing over snow-covered roads. Finally, Sunday arrives. The snow has stopped and the freezing temperatures leave for the day. Now the digging out and the rebuilding begins and the realization that an unprecedented storm has hit us. This is the first time, I believe, that all 67 Alabama counties were under snow cover at the same time. Uh, combined with the fact that the snow was so heavy and wet, along with all of that wind and such extensive snow cover, certainly I would say the storm of the century. J.B. Elliott is a retired meteorologist with the Weather Service in Birmingham. He's been forecasting weather here for many years, and he makes one other good point. Even though this was a tremendous snowfall, it wasn't followed by a long blast of bitter cold temperatures. That prevented us from seeing the major problem of frozen and burst pipes that we saw back in the 1982 ice storm. And thank goodness we were lucky in that way, no question about it. But still, every single one of us was affected by that storm, and Brenda Ledun has that story when we come back. 
As we take a quick break, a look at the snowfall records from the storm we'll never forget. And remember, that snow fell in less than 24 hours. It's a li big lollipop stuck with lines on it. No, it's a hat. It's an ugly hat with a bug on it. It's oh, Fat Stick Man with freckles on his stomach. It's, yeah. You're patting his stomach. It's Fat Stick Man. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Holding a plate of fish. So I don't know what it is. She's cheating. She's, She's writing the words cheater. again. Here we go. We're going to uh, Havana. We're going to Havana, everybody. We're going to have a baby. What kind of clues? We're going to have a baby. We're going to have a baby. We're going to have a baby. <laughs> Baby, sleep. The little lamb is on the green. With the woolly fleece, so soft and clean. I think my husband's more nervous than I am by having a baby. <laughs> I'm not nervous. Doctor just seems to think there's a good chance that our baby will be premature, so I'm just wondering all the questions. This is our first child, so we've just had some questions about everything. I'll try to simplify. I cry a lot. You know. I'm worried about us adjusting to this new little person that's going to be sharing our home. Yeah. <laughs> it is a big uh, adjustment. <laughs> As you know, Winter Storm 93 dumped record amounts of snow, not only in Birmingham, but all across the state. I suspect most of us, though, will remember the storm not only for its record snow, but also for how it changed our lifestyles, at least for several days. Yet for some, the impact of the storm will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Brenda Ladon has the story of the victims hit hardest by the storm. Brenda? Janet, the simple fact is that we can all count ourselves victims of the storm we'll never forget. The lucky ones only suffered from the inconvenience of not being able to get around on snow-covered roads. Hundreds of thousands more had to survive without electricity or phone service, or in some cases, both. But for some others, the loss is much greater, a loss that will take some time to deal with. We see the first storm victims early Saturday morning when the heavy snow forces hundreds of people to abandon their cars. But we soon realized many others have suffered property damage. An early example, the snow collapses the roof of the Jim Skinner Ford showroom. The storm snaps trees, bringing down power lines and leaving thousands of people without electricity and in many cases, heat. By daylight, the number of power outages jumps by the minute, forcing families to pick up and move just to find warmth. Yeah, it's great. We can't have a fire or anything, so we're kind of worried about the baby. They're already cold. They're not even... For thousands, the loss of electricity is problem enough. As power crews work outside, families like this one wrap themselves in blankets inside. Oh, I've just got everything I own on. And a hat, that's the main thing, it's the hat. Now, then, like going to war, it's been an experience. You don't want to do it twice, but it's fun, it's an adventure to go through. At the storm's height, fire departments respond to a number of calls. Many of those fires start simply as a result of people trying to stay warm. 
Saturday morning, a major blaze breaks out at a Homewood shopping center. Our cameras capture the thick smoke, which blends with the snowy white sky and the more than one foot of snow on the ground. One business wiped out is the Comedy Club. This is just horrible. It's devastating. I just, there's nothing left. The blaze, difficult enough to fight in normal conditions, becomes impossible to deal with in this blizzard. Just a few hours later, Bob and Betty Miner lose almost everything they own. That Saturday night, the Miners sit in their Homewood house, and like most of us, they're just trying to stay warm. But that night, a fire breaks out. The fire started uh, back, you see that, uh, that divider, uh, concrete block wall there? Mm -hmm. The fire started on the other side of that in a space heater. It just happened so fast I couldn't think, and then, and then once I came out, I was afraid to go back in because of smoke. The smoke was devastating. After the Homewood Fire Department got the call, they responded immediately, but they had trouble that night. They got stuck on the curve behind me. They couldn't make it up the hill because of all the snow that night. And by the time they did get a rescue truck up to the top of the hill to the miners' home, it was completely destroyed. The miners lost all of their belongings from 19 years of marriage. More tragically, they also lost three family cats. Our loss is mostly material things. You know, a lot of people had a lot greater loss than we did. Uh, except for our cats. Yeah, except for our cats. Now, authorities blame the storm for at least 18 deaths in Alabama. Plus, Alabamians so far have filed at least $20 million worth of insurance claims as a result of storm damage, and that figure continues to grow. Janet? Thank you, Brenda. Well, the question now is just how prepared were we for this storm? Were the agencies in charge of responding to this emergency ready for a storm of this magnitude? And what have they learned? When we come back, I'll take a closer look at those questions. First, a reminder of the massive power outages across the state. These numbers are from Saturday afternoon, 24 hours after the storm hit. And keep in mind, the statewide figure does not include outages for TVA customers in North Alabama or customers of smaller electric co-ops. Every night at 10 o'clock, Channel 6, your 24-hour news source, brings you information you can use. Channel 6 News takes you to the scene with live coverage wherever breaking stories are happening. We tell you what's behind this story and how it affects you and your family. Join us tonight at 10 o'clock for Channel 6 News, your 24-hour news source. Find out what's happening by calling the WBRC Channel 6 Community Affairs Bulletin Board at 967-7055, Category 1011. Hey, folks, we're not open for business regardless. Hey, Daddy, no building, no overhead. Hey, son, it's no time for joking. Oh, I'm sorry, Daddy, but where are we going to move all the inventory uh, while we're under construction? Move, move. The insurance company is okay. Jim Skinner Ford to sell everything right here regardless. So, folks, if you're even thinking about a new Ford, when the roof came down, so did the prices. That's a Jim Skinner Ford where we'll still beat your best deal regardless. regardless. I'm proud to announce that Parnell's is expanding again. This week, we're opening two new stores. In the Walmart Center in Huffman is our new Parnell Sleep Shop, your beauty rest headquarters where I promise the lowest prices on beauty rest and spring wall. This week, we're moving into our new warehouse showroom on 3rd Avenue North, two blocks off I-65. If you can stand the mess, I guarantee you we will save you money. Shop our sleep shop in Huffman and Parnell's 3rd Avenue North off I-65. The first time that I received a $160 check, and I said, oh, where did this come from? The check came from the CoStars program, a community project sponsored by WBRC and Blockbuster Video. To find out how we can help you, contact any Blockbuster Video location today. I certainly would recommend that all teachers or schools look into the CoStar program because it certainly will help you in so many ways, and you feel very free to use the money for things that you need in your school. No matter when severe weather hits, you can count on James Spann to make your weather clear. Only on Channel 6, your 24-hour news and weather source.
The storm we'll never forget. 13 inches of snow. It's certainly the storm of the century and something our generation had never seen in Alabama. And while emergency personnel certainly have contingency plans for dealing with a big winter storm, they admit those plans do not include handling a foot of snow or more. So following the blizzard of 93, they're taking another look at those plans. I thought it could be worse. There could be a tree through Grandma's room. <laughs> this is the first time Claudia Hickman has gone outside her house since the snowstorm hit. For days, she stayed inside, taking care of a sick mother and a terminally ill grandmother. Both of them rely on oxygen machines, which need electricity to operate. That's been part of the problem with the power being out. They haven't been able to get in because the line's down, trees down. But Ms. Hickman's real frustration came in asking for help from a number of agencies to get oxygen to the house. And when I called 911, I was told that they could not provide oxygen tank to stay out here. They could come and give somebody oxygen, but they would have to leave with it. Finally, she got help, but not through a government agency. WERC radio broadcast her appeal. Allen Tree Service responded with a generator, and an off-duty fireman brought her oxygen. Today, Claudia Hickman questions whether emergency personnel were ready for the storm. I don't know where the problem was, and I'm not out to bash anybody. I would like to know where the problem is, and I am certainly trying to find out where the breakdown came and what could have been done differently. There are a lot of success stories, uh, but there may have been some individual things that fell through the crack, and we're willing to accept that responsibility. J.C. Davenport of the State Emergency Management Agency helped coordinate local relief efforts. Davenport says the EMA had its plan in place, but didn't count on certain problems. Emergency management? Yes, they One problem? Telephone communications went out between the EMA and National Guard headquarters in Montgomery with no ham radio backup. Another problem. These National Guard Humvees were the only emergency vehicles which could travel on the thick snow and ice-covered roads. Despite these problems, EMA officials seemed pleased with their work. And given the fact that uh, no one in this area has ever experienced this type of disaster before, I think uh, that we did a tremendous job. Alabama Power also had its emergency plan in place before the storm. But like EMA, the sheer magnitude of the storm hurt their efforts. We could not pre-position crews like from Mobile up to the north because we knew Mobile would be hit. We also had problems Saturday not being able to get in assistance from outside the state because everybody was hit. By the end of the week, power crews had restored service to nearly all of their customers, giving people a chance to reflect on what a week without electricity was like. We've made it better than a lot of people I know, but it's been rough. EMA officials say it's not just a matter of the power company and emergency agencies being prepared. They hope everyone will learn about the importance of emergency planning on an individual level. So everyone shares uh, a certain amount of responsibility, and if we get into finger-pointing, there's enough of that to go around. Claudia Hickman, the woman who was stranded with her sick mother and grandmother, says she thought she prepared as best she could, but adds she'll be better prepared for the next emergency. I've learned that you're on your own. Emergency management officials are evaluating their performance during the storm. They stress they will learn from their mistakes. Well, despite the tragedies and the damage left by the storm, it seemed to bring out the best in people. When we come back, meet the heroes of the storm we'll never forget. First, as we take a break, a look at the number of people who stayed in National Guard armories during the storm. I'm sorry, Daddy, but where are we going to move all the inventory while we're under construction? Move, move. The insurance company is okay. Jim's going to afford to sell everything right here regardless. So, folks, if you're even thinking about a new Ford, when the roof came down, so did the prices. That's a Jim's going to afford where we'll still beat your best deal regardless. regardless. There's only one Jeep, and we've got it at Don Drunnins and Hoover. Hi, I'm Don Drunnin with good news for those of you who want the best go-anywhere vehicle ever made, Jeep. You can lease this two-wheel drive Grand Cherokee from Don Drunnins for $399 a month for 36 months. The Grand Cherokee is fun to drive and it's safe. 
The driver's side airbag, analog brakes are standard. No other sport utility can say that. Come see the best selection of Jeeps at Dondron and Buick Jeep Eagle Chrysler Plymouth on Highway 31 in Hoover. I'd like to read you my story. I dropped out of school to get married, but without a diploma, all I could get were dead-end jobs. I felt there was no way out. Then I started taking classes and got my GED. Now I'm planning to go to college. If you need a way out, pick up the phone and rewrite your own life story. Read and write your own success story. Call 802-READ. This is Erwin Lowenstein, president of Mark's Fitzgerald Furniture. And this is the deal at Mark's Fitzgerald. Buy any item of furniture, a whole house full if you choose, and pay just $10 down. Then only $10 a month for a year. Plus pay no interest for one year. $10 down, $10 a month, no interest for a year. That's the deal at Mark's Fitzgerald. Okay, one more time in case you missed it somehow. $10 down, $10 a month, no interest for a year. All because Erwin says so. What a guy, what a deal at Mark's Fitzgerald Furniture. During the storm, we'll never forget, we saw once again that the worst of times really does bring out the best in some people. And we saw and heard countless stories of heroes, if you will, neighbors a lot of them, ordinary people doing some extraordinary things. Yeah, and if there's one thing we've heard during the past two weeks, is that people really pull together to get through the storm. Despite all the frustration, there were simple acts of kindness, and in some cases, extraordinary acts of courage that bridged gaps and turned ordinary people into friends and even heroes. Day, just Magic Daily 6, your station for the best variety. You'll always find the best mix of all your favorite songs. The music that makes you feel good from Magic 96. You can find David Tinsley here most nights, playing music on Birmingham radio station Magic 96. But the morning of the storm, Magic stopped its music and joined with sister station WERC in opening their phone lines to help storm victims. Soon, David and his partner, Mike Wood, became heroes to so many of their listeners in a time of need. Uh, what I was calling is that I have a bunch of firewood. Okay, if anybody great. in the Midfield Green Acres area needs some, anybody's got like four-wheel drive vehicles or anything that can get up here we need you know need them to come help in best save you because we're pretty much at a loss yes um we need some firewood okay. uh, i've got a four-wheel drive vehicle over here and i'm willing to help out a lot of these people that i've been listening to on the radio to have a voice talking to me and all these other people going i'm in the same situation i'm in the same boat that would have meant a great deal to me had i been sitting there listening the, the folks that helped out the people in need, they were risking their lives a, a lot of times, getting out on the roads and traveling into some of the areas that were really hardest hit. There were heroes like this man, John Graham. He drove around with a friend in his four-wheel drive pickup, helping people in need. Or these National Guardsmen. They somehow made a two-hour drive from Talladega to Birmingham on those icy highways so this man, Andrew Swain, could get the kidney transplant he's been waiting two years for. Well, it took us two hours, and there was probably, I would say, 100, what, 100 tractor trailers on the road, and you can't run up one side. We had to run down one side and cross over the median and ride a little while and cross back. And we just begin to wonder if we was going to make it. But you did. Oh, yeah, we're here. The blizzard had another way of bringing out the best in people. A woman living at Ski Lodge 3 Apartments in Birmingham took these pictures with her home video camera. Like many residents, she was stuck inside of her apartment alone. There they are. This is the next day when people started going outside. That's when something special happened. People who had lived next to each other started meeting for the first time, having fun and leaning on each other as neighbors. It forced us to meet each other, and that's where we, we felt like we were blessed to, to meet some real nice guys that they kind of are just like real good friends. It's just nice to know that there is somebody there that if you do walk by, I mean, you can at least say, well, hi, how are you doing, you know? And once you got over that initial being shy or afraid of getting close to people you don't know, everybody start talking to each other. Y'all get talked, talked to some kids. Look at We try. We try. 
people helping people. That's what pulled us through our storm of the century and in the process brought us all closer together. It's been an experience. A wonderful one, though. Restores your faith in humanity, you know, when you see all these people come together, even people from two blocks up there that stay here or hundreds of miles away. It's just great. So, thanks, Alabama. Take care. See ya. See ya. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, Alabama. Now, they were thanking Alabama because they're from Canada. The Seabornes ended up at the Homewood Armory as they traveled to South Florida from Canada. <laughs> Sounds like they may come back to visit Alabama one day, doesn't it? Uh, one other note about the Talladega man who underwent the kidney transplant. Officials at University Hospital say Andrew Swain is in stable condition and is going to be okay. Mm, quite a time. The storm will never forget 24 hours of snow that put most of central Alabama into a deep, dark, freeze for several days. But with the power outages, cold homes, slick highways, and traps travelers, came a spirit of warmth as hundreds of people reached out and gave firewood, transportation, and most of all themselves to people in need. That's right. We got through it together. Yeah. Let's hope we don't have to do it again anytime soon. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. As we leave you tonight, some final sights and sounds of the blizzard of 93.